Welcome to the channel. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Gosford, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Thank you for coming in. I really appreciate it. Let's just fix this camera up a bit. There it is. Father, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus for Israel. We pray for the people that we know, care for, and are concerned about. We ask you, Lord, to bring healing in every aspect and respect of their lives. Bring a revelation of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, into their lives and help us all to be loving, open, able to resolve and to live healthy, happy, prosperous lives. In Jesus' name, under the presence of your Holy Spirit. Amen. We look now to Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 10. Proverbs 27 and verse 10. I'm going to parallel this one. It's a little bit complicated. There's a lot in it. So we'll do some different translations and then we'll move from there. Do not forsake your friend or a friend of your family. And do not go to your relative's house when disaster strikes you. Better a neighbor nearby than a relative far away. Never abandon a friend, either yours or your father's. When disaster strikes, you won't have to ask your brother for assistance. It's better to go to a neighbor than to a brother who lives far away. Do not abandon your friend or your father's friend. And do not go to your brother's house on the day of your disaster. Better is a neighbor who is nearby than a brother far away. Do not abandon your own friend and your father's friend. And do not go to your brother's house in the day of your disaster. Better is a neighbor who is near than a brother who is far away. Don't abandon your friend or your father's friend. And don't go to your brother's house in your time of calamity. Better a neighbor nearby than a brother far away. Do not forsake your friend or your friend or the friend of your father and do not enter the house of your brother in the day of your brokenness. Brokenness. Better is a neighbor that is near than a brother that is distant. Now I'm starting to get it. I'm not sure if you're starting to get it, but now I'm starting to get it. Friends can sometimes be closer than family members. Thine own friend and thy father's friend forsake not, and when thou art in distress, go not into thy brother's house. Better is a friend that is near than a brother living far off. Don't desert an old friend or of your family or visit your relatives when you are in trouble. A friend nearby is better than relatives far away. So what I'm starting to understand from this is that sometimes friends that know the family, your friends that know you, are of more use in time of trouble than family members. And one more. Thine own friend and thy father's friend forsake not. And go not into thy brother's house in the day of thy affliction. Better is a neighbor that is near 
than a brother that is far off. So what I'm getting from this is it's not that the family members are no good or that they won't listen or anything like this. They're just not available. And when family members aren't available because too many people become reliant on their families, which is okay, you have to have a broader network. And if you take for granted your friends and your father's friends, which speaks of honour, friends that were honourable, not just friends that are grubs and mugs and no good. Do not go to your brother's house in the time of calamity. See, going all the way to see a family member on a matter that really isn't or possibly doesn't deserve the effort Right, where you may not be met with the response and the attentiveness that you need. It's better to have friends and friends of the family that you can trust, not just anybody. A lot of people are starting to learn that you just don't trust anybody. And let's not mistake friends as... Um, just automatically being your friend because they're a relative. A lot of relatives can be twisted, warped, perverted, and not worthy of your trust. Let's just make that clear. And if you have a friend, it should be a friend that's unbiased, someone that's going to give you honest feedback about your situation, not just a person that's going to say things that you want to hear and that suit yourself. No. Because calamity, brokenness, was another word that was translated here, is inevitable. And it can be calamity that is unpredicted. It can be calamity that is, uh, by way of life, the way life works, it can be financial, it can be an accident, it can be a breakup. Breakups are common now. It could be a matter of unresolved, which is usually the reason for a breakup, or just out and out evil. And it's better to be, see, this is the thing, this is the key here. This is the true key behind this for those of you that have a Christian heritage, or those of you that don't, because you all would have heard the saying, the golden rule of the Bible, if you're only going to understand one thing about the Bible, is to love your neighbour. As yourself. Now the interesting thing about the Lord's golden rule, the ultimate idealism of the Bible is it doesn't say love your family as yourself. It says to love your neighbor as yourself. And that doesn't bring the responsibility down upon the neighbor. Okay, there's certain people you're just not going to mix with and you're just going to have boundaries around and you're even going to have um, estranged. It's about our attitude towards people and that's diverse. You have to have structured boundaries, different levels of boundaries and way in which you approach people that keep you safe from them and them safe from you. Because calamity is going to come. Um, take covert emotional incest, for example. That's when a parent overconnects, over enmeshes with a child or adult child, and they become emotionally intimate, enmeshed. They cross boundaries. You have to have. To fix that problem, a level of boundaries put in place. It doesn't mean you love that person any less. It doesn't mean you care about that person any less. As a matter of fact, it means you care about that person more because you're protecting them from the temptation of sharing personal, intimate, um, emotional transitions 
by way of cutting them back through boundaries. You see, everything comes down to looking after ourselves. Everything. And when we look after ourselves, we have our emotional health, our emotional intelligence in order. It's not just random. And then that gives us the ability, when calamity comes, to be able to find resolve in a way in which is balanced, a way in which will bring resolve for ourself and possibly the people around us. You see, if we put things in order and we get things uh, approached, resolved and executed in the right way, it doesn't matter what happens to our neighbour because we've got our boundaries and emotional intelligence and the way in which we share it and use it and um, restrain it in order. So do not forsake your friend or your father's friend if they're worthy of your friendship. You've got to have boundaries that work at different levels to protect you from these people in the world, whether they're family, friends, friends, whatever they are, neighbours, so that as you journey through life, you're safe from them, they're safe from you, and you interact in a way in which everyone benefits. And if that means distance, obviously a lot of people are distant from their families, their brothers, sisters, mothers, then it prevents further calamity. That's the object of this scripture. And do not go to your brother's house in the day of your calamity. And that's brother, sister, mother, family member's house. Better a neighbor nearby than a brother far away. And it's all based on your emotional intelligence and how you execute that or restrain it in daily life. Viewers, I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison from Gosford on the Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Thank you for joining me. And bye for now.